for you, Kat, is um, I, I, um, about you, your speaking is going to happen more. I, I saw it on Facebook that you were preaching, prophesying. And I feel that God, as you walk into your calling more, you've been walking in it, but more God's going to expand your territory. And um, I just see business and ministry linking up for you where it will become one. Because a lot of people, it's not yet one. But for you, I see it happening more where you'll get more accurate prophetic words even for your clients. And um, mm -hmm. I do see you travel. I know there's COVID right now. But but I see you uh, traveling for your business. And, and it's going to be combined business ministry. It's not going to be quite like ministry as in Minister Kat Han is going <laughs> to come fly here with prophetess. They'll be like marketplace. Kind of like in a way what I do. Uh, even though I do also the other speaking. But I, I just see... God expanding your your territory where even churches in other countries that you have not met yet you'll meet them through business through your clients and uh so keep pursuing uh the things that you were scared to do but you want to do keep doing it <laughs> and it's never too late I mean you know sometimes you're like God what about my husband or whatever you know it's never too late <laughs> it says in, in Matthew 6, uh, 33 right seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will be added so you can have a I, I like a Hong Kong superstar looking husband. <laughs> it's never too late. It's good. It's never too late. So if that is your desire still, which I feel it is, then then uh, then continue to believe for that for your future husband, for your husband in the now. Uh, man of God that's guapo and rich. That <laughs> 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 they have has, that can flow with your calling is the most important. So thank you, Father. How have you grown cat in authority and, and, and uh, walking in dominion? And I just see God giving you more creative ideas for breakthrough in ministry and also breakthrough in business as well. And God using you to, to build a, a, a network, a bigger network among different uh, Christian groups, marketplace groups, and uh, things like, you know, Fishgate or like what you do or like TNT before, like groups yeah. like that. It's not necessarily a formal church and also some formal churches. I just see God using you to network them together uh, in such a way that would help bring the kingdom of God to earth. Yeah. So I keep pushing with the prophecy word of knowledge uh, to the point where you'll get confident to do it on non-Christians. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Okay. That's all for now. Okay. Since if we're still waiting, I'll, I'll go for the next one. Since I have to go by 10. I have a, I have a long distance call with Russia with my scientists. <laughs> so anyone else? Can I go next? Sophie. Okay, Sophie Doodles. That was your sister, right? That was on the picture, not you. <laughs> okay, Sophie. Okay, Father, um, yeah. I thank you, for, thank you for her heart for, for you um, and for her heart to, to that she's always hungry. Uh, you know, Sophie, like there's times where you may feel it, hard on yourself. You know, God is not as hard on you. God is not as hard on you as you are on yourself. But you have that hunger to push yourself to grow. Uh, because God has made you like um, that? like a Deborah in the Bible. I see, see a Deborah where if, I mean, nothing, nothing against guys, but there's times where, where no one else will do it. A guy won't do it. So God will use a woman to be the leader. But also at times women won't do it too. But Sophie will do it. <laughs> so there's times where God will just use you just because you're the only one that's willing to say yes when everyone is saying no. And, and, and God gives you the anointing because you are available uh, for the things that you, do, that you just step in to help out. But I just see uh, even this year, like, um, who's this? I remember we were talking about, I can't remember if it was you. I can't remember now. I, I can't remember now if it was you. I hope, I hope this is not wrong. But I think I saw something before with jewelry for you and something with, uh, was it jewelry? can't remember now uh yeah but then god like using it uh to fund i see something like with your business says funding the kingdom of god but also funding what you're going to do for god as well um so it's not just funding other people but funding it's like uh what you call it, like a social enterprise but in a kingdom of god way that's the word that i see and not just in philippines but a, i see a collaboration with other countries as well amen if I had beer, I'd be more accurate. <laughs> Just have root beer because you guys know me. Okay, yeah. who else would like beer? Thank you. Dark. Me. I'll give you beer. Right. Mike, I think Mickey. Mickey needs prayers. Mickey. No, I'm, I can only see four people on my on my phone screen. So 
I'll go. I'll I'll switch. I'll switch it. I'll what do you call it? I'll move right later. I only see Jarv now. Yeah. Swipe. Okay. Swipe. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Swipe. That's the word. <laughs> what happened to my England? Okay, Jarv. Uh, I think I met you in Philippines, right? Or in Singapore too? Only, only a few times in Philippines. In Singapore also. Okay. All right. Jarv, you wanna on your on your microphone? So, so if, if, in case I, you wanna say something. Okay. Father, I lift up Jarv to you. I I don't I don't know you very well, but but I see um. I see you speaking more. I see God giving you revelation and you writing it down. I don't know if you preach yet, um, but or you maybe do, and I don't realize it. <laughs> but I just see God blessing your words, like when you, as you speak, uh, the, what God has given you. It's as if He wears you like a glove. Like it's not jarve. It's like jarve on the Holy Ghost, and then just the flow. You know, I feel like God is like you're like David, where maybe others have tried to make you fit in their own style of ministry. But then God has helped you find that you have your own anointing. Like David couldn't wear Saul, Saul's armor, but he had his own way of killing Goliath. Like God has given you uh, your own anointing that only fits you and nobody else. And, uh, you know, I, I just think of that that verse that Moses said about himself, that he was the most humble man on the earth. And I just see that God has grown you in humility. And it says that the meek shall inherit the earth. That God has, has grown you in your meekness, which is not weakness, but power. Because to inherit something means you reign and dominate for God's kingdom over it. So I just see, you know, the things that you thought you couldn't do, God has given you something beyond confidence where you know now, like, wow, through God, I have a confidence that the things that I thought I, I was bad at, I wish to do, but I couldn't do. You're finding that that you're you're learning how to tap in his, his strength in, your, in the midst of your weakness, that things you couldn't do, you're starting to do. Or things that you said that I can't, I'll never be able to do this. I just see you walking in, like, into a new level of doing things that you thought you could never do before. And uh, just a new level of excitement as well in, in uh, things for the kingdom of God. And um, yeah, there's times where we, we try something and it doesn't work and you're like, oh crap, but, but you don't give up, you know, you keep going. And God loves the fact that, that, you know, even that there's times where we may fail in certain ventures, like you always go back. It won't, it won't dampen your faith. You won't be down for too long. F word. Okay. Javik. Hope that you. spoke to you. I'm, I'm going to swipe right. <laughs> Sorry, old school. My, my computer's too slow. Okay. Anyone else would like a prayer? Before me, Mike! 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 <laughs> okay, let me know when Evan is online too, so that um, yeah. so that I'll stop and then I can I can start speaking. Nick, so Mike. when his people are online, let me know. Yeah, they're I think, not online yet. I think I think Evan is um is done linking the to linking us to the China group. But okay. Mike, I think I know you have to pray for Mickey. I think she needs it. Okay, you want me to pray for you now, Mickey, or later? Uh, and any any. Okay, wait, wait. Ah, shoot, it's stuck. Okay, all right, Mickey. Okay, I'll pray for you now. <laughs> okay, uh, Father, thank you for Mickey. Um, thank you that that the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. Uh, that that whatever ups or downs we go through, your calling is always there, no matter what. <laughs> so, um, you know, I I was praying for a friend of mine who. Um, okay, this reminds me of you, Mickey. Like, because God has given you a gift of leadership. So whatever you do, people will follow you. Good, bad, amazing, whatever, people will follow you, whether you like it or not. <laughs> you may not want them to follow you, but too bad. <laughs> it's a calling on your life that people will follow you. And so uh, I just feel like, you know, God has made you a revolutionary. And sometimes when we're feeling a certain way, it's because we feel a lack of fit, a lot of bad English. We feel, we feel like we don't fit anywhere, whether it be Christians or non-Christians. That lack of fit can be very frustrating. And then sometimes the devil can use it um, to cause us to feel rejection in a subtle way. But you know who you are in the end. I'm not very worried for you, actually. Uh, I just see, like, you know, that God is that God has made you not just a, you know, people like to say, oh, revivalist, et cetera. They like certain terms. I don't think you like being labeled. <laughs> you know, God has made you unique. But you're definitely an earth shaker, Mickey. Uh, God has made you an earth shaker. And so I just see, like, like uh, okay, I just see the, to the things that God, that, that wait, that not that God has brought you through, but just shit happens sometimes, right? Uh, that that has happened. 
that God will give you wisdom. And I can see you like speaking in front of people, not just Christian groups, but I see stuff like something like TED Talks, but something, a different platform. So I see stuff both in the Christian world and in the secular world of God using you to build people up um, in terms of speaking, in terms of being an entrepreneur, also in terms of just life in general. And even in the midst of the secular stuff, uh, it's going to combine with the Christian stuff. Because a lot of people, they feel it's, it's what do you call it, sacred or secular. I can't do both, but you can do both. And so I just feel like um, even through all our exploration, you're, you're kind of discovering even more of how God has made you. Uh, through the good and the bad, you're discovering more of how God has created you. And uh, all, all the stuff is there. So even though like we may feel we've taken five steps back, we never really truly take five steps back because even in the midst of the things that we've gone through we grow even stronger when we give it to god because uh, god has given you a very powerful mind where if you it's like if you it's like if you will it it can happen good or bad and even if you weren't a christian i've seen people like this in my job uh where they will it and it kind of happens because there is somewhat of a dominion even for those who don't know christ because we're humans right and we can tap into the god power or another power as well so I just see like you finding your fit more of how to do it. I'm going to show my face with me. Yeah. So that's why I feel for you, Mickey. But all the other stuff, like the healings, miracles, it still applies. <laughs> but it's in your own fit. And it's the way God has made Mickey and not the, how the, God has made me or whatever pastor or I'm not a pastor, by the way, guys watching. I'm not a pastor. Um, yeah. But yeah, he understands you. He understands when people don't understand, there's times no one will understand but him. Even your best friends won't understand. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. How Thank you so here? much. Do I start now, Kat? Because uh, Evan's right. group is waiting, I think. Okay, so they're online. They're to start now. Yeah, they are. Okay. Uh, okay, I will talk more slowly now. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to talk about uh, being the one that's different or the, have you guys seen The Matrix? One of my favorite movies. Uh, in The Matrix, there's a guy named Neo and then he's living a normal life and then he finds out that he's an, an anomaly. I'm, <laughs> Brita. I, I'm not, just call me Mike. Uh, and so through Christ, we're an anomaly. We're in the world, but we're not of the world, right? And sometimes Christians go to extremes and I have gone through extremes as well, where, where like, you know, people that they're not, they, they use that, that term, not in the world, but not of the world. And many times Christians are not even in the world. Like they, they join a monastery and they never mm -hmm. see the outside world, right? They're like a monk in the cave. So that's the extreme. The other extreme is like, which I have also done myself. I've done both extremes is uh, it, you're in the world, but then you're too much like it. <laughs> like, like before I used to to be a little bit too much too wild and so i'm naturally a wild person but it's you know sometimes we tend we, we can swim we can swim we can swing sorry evan uh to extremes right of being out of the world and of being in the world but like the world and i've done that as well uh so i you know so it's it, it, we're in the world but not of the world because we're called to be light in the darkness right and so it's through the Holy Spirit and the word of God. That's how we become different. And one thing I've learned, it's something very simple, is uh, I talk to the Holy Spirit. Like, you know, I, I, I hear about people like Captain Coleman and others that talk to the Holy Spirit. I don't have this Bible verse. I should have wrote it down. You can Google it. But the Bible talks about having fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Now, the word fellowship with the Holy Spirit is to hang out with him, right? So when you, when you hang out with each other, you're having fellowship with one another, right? You're having relationship with one another because the Holy Spirit is the one that is in us. Like God, the father physically, or in terms of location, he is in heaven. Jesus, uh, the son of God is at the right hand of God, right? It says in Ephesians chapter one. Now God is not just with us, but it says in John 16, that the Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus said he will be. He is with you, but he shall be in you. So when Jesus is in your heart, he's in you. So God is with you through the Holy Spirit. And it says that Jesus said, I and the Father are one in John 17. So when you're talking to the Holy Spirit, you're talking to Jesus and God the Father too. 
because they're what? Like uh, some people would are very anal and they say, oh, you shouldn't talk to the Holy Spirit. You should only talk to the Father. You don't even talk to Jesus because it says that you talk to the Father. I'm like, okay, I understand what they're saying because they say, oh, you shall talk, call the Father, talk to the Father. But it says fellowship with the Holy Spirit, right? And they're one. And they're three persons, one God. So I don't see any problem with talking to the Holy Spirit. And that's how I get breakthrough in my life. Like when I'm struggling, I talk to him like I'm talking to my friend, uh, to my workout buddy, to my beer buddy. That's how I talk to the Holy Spirit. And, and the way he helps us is he helps us because when you talk to him, the Bible opens up to you in a new way. It says in Romans 12, verse 2, to not be Romans 12, verse 2. That to not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So don't be conformed to the world's pattern. What is the world's pattern? Fear, death, uh, selfishness. You know, that's the pattern of the world or uh, greed. Uh, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? Uh, there's, a, there's a good preaching by Andrew Womack called uh, Body, Soul, right. and Spirit. And he talks about how your spirit is saved, but but your soul has to still be saved by the word of God. There's a difference between spirit and soul. And so it says, it says I don't have this verse too. You can Google it. It says that the word of God for the saving of your souls. Uh, I think it's in Peter, but you can Google it. Word of God for the saving of your souls. Not your spirit. Your spirit saved when Jesus is in your heart, but your soul, our soul, still needs to be renewed by the word of God, which is why we can still do things like a non-Christian, even though our spirit is saved, because our soul has not yet been transformed by right. God's word. You get it? Yeah. So, so we need to, well, that's why the word of God is very important. Um, you know, I, I, what, what irritates me is when people stumble because a great man or a great woman of God fell or they got sick. I'll give you an example. I think Bill Johnson's amazing. I think Todd White is amazing. Uh, okay. I, I think they're great speakers. But there was, I remember I was praying for somebody who needed healing, something like a hernia. And my friend said, oh, Bill Johnson moves in healing and he had a hernia and he got surgery. Then maybe I need to get surgery too. Because Bill Johnson who moves in healing got a, a hernia, surgery for his hernia. Then I had a friend who had knee pain. Oh man, I'm so worried I'll need surgery like Todd White. <laughs> I'm like, I love Todd. I think they're amazing, my, but my faith is not my, based on a man or woman of God. My, my faith is based. Me. Mike, can you go Yo, lower? Evan is every, yeah. every hard time Sorry. translating. Sorry, Evan. <laughs> Sorry, Evan. Yeah, okay, let me know if, if he's struggling and then I'll, I'll slow down. So, um, my faith is not based on a man or woman of God, though I respect them. My faith is based on God. <laughs> On what the Bible says, not on what a man or woman's faith is. I respect their faith, but my faith is not based on their faith, but on what the Bible says. Um, okay, is that better? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you're fast with your computer, Sophie Doodles. Um, so I'll give you an example for me. Um, okay, how do you say this? The culture in each country is different, whether it's China, Philippines, or Singapore. And Singapore, you know, lowest, lowest death rates of COVID, they do things very well. Good quality, right? Evan, you're a good Singaporean. Evan is a good Singaporean, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but many times, <laughs> because everything is done so carefully here, people move from being careful to fearful. So, yeah, people, you know, I think people, you, have to this, you can be careful, but you don't have to be fearful while you're being careful. Right. And um, and I just noticed that a lot of people tend to go to the fearful side as they're being careful. Um, I had injured my, I had so many injuries in the last two years <laughs> that I've been in Singapore. Uh, and uh, one of the injuries that I had was I was at a, I love, I'm going to say it wrong for our China friends. Mala Xiangguo, Mala Hot Pot, the super spicy. I love it. So it, it's like, it's really hot Sichuan food. So I was at, I was at uh, getting, having some Mala Xiangguo with my friends. Uh, and uh, I went to the bathroom and the bathroom is, is made of a steel door and it closes very fast. And then when I went, I was wearing my Sinelas, my sandals. 
And when I when I went out of the bathroom door, the metal door that was rusty got caught. It slammed into my right foot, mm-hmm. and I was squirting blood. Like, have you seen Kill Bill? Like where the the head chopped off and the blood squirting. My foot was squirting blood all across the restaurant. And I just walked casually because it's like they didn't care. So I, I walked as if I didn't care with blood going all over the restaurant as my foot was like spraying blood. I thought it was kind of funny. And then I sat down and the, the restaurant owners were really scared because they wondered all the blood was coming from. I said, it's from my foot. <laughs> and, um, and after that, I was with two friends and they're like, do you want to go to the emergency room? I think you're going to need surgery because it was, it was just blurting like a fountain. And I said, nah. And I just kept eating my hot pot. <laughs> I just put my foot out there and I said, while eating my mala, Xiangbo hot pot. And I said, it'll stop bleeding eventually in Jesus' name. And eventually it stopped bleeding. <laughs> and I didn't put a wrap on it yet. And then I, they said, we, I think there's a hole in your foot. It looked like there was a puncture in my foot. He said, I think you need to get stitches. I'm like, Nah, let's just go home. So I went home and I just spoke to my foot. I said, foot, uh, I call you healed. And one of the things that I do now, I'm not saying you have to do this. You can pray for healing and you will get healed. Yes, you can ask God to heal you and he will heal you. But I no longer I no longer pray for healing for myself. Because okay. it says in First Peter 2.24 that by his wounds, you were healed. In First Peter 224 by his wounds you were past tense you were healed so for me nowadays i don't ask god for something that is already mine healing is mine already so i don't pray for healing anymore for me you can do it you can pray for healing and it will work but i don't feel the need for it because i already have it right you know so i said to my foot foot that's squirting like a fountain of blood i call you healed And then like within the next day, it had totally healed up and I didn't need stitches. (laughs) However, after it healed up after two days, I couldn't feel my foot. Like I couldn't move it. Even though the wound stopped bleeding, I couldn't move it at all. I would think move, toe, move. And it wasn't signaling to my toe to move. And I was asking a doctor friend of mine, he said, oh, you probably cut some nerves, ligaments and tendons. So the signal from your brain to your foot is not getting there. So you need surgery still. And I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> so I'm not trying to be a, an a-hole, but I'm like, that's my faith is I don't need surgery. And so I would walk to work. And then at the time I was helping part time in the church so that I was attending, uh, I was helping part time for the young adults, which I'm not right now. I'm not doing part time. And as I would go to, to meet the pastors, pastor's like what's wrong with your foot i said it it's um i can't feel it you're gonna get surgery like no (laughs) you have insurance i I don't i know but i don't i don't need to use my insurance so for about a month about a month or two months i was limping and i couldn't feel my foot and so i said no but the bible i don't care about what i feel because the bible says in second corinthians five verse seven second corinthians five verse seven are you okay evan (laughs) for we walk by faith and not by sight for we walk by faith and not by what we feel for we walk by what the word of God says faith in the word and not by the fact that I can't feel my foot. And I, and it was funny. There's times I would laugh at my injury and I'm like, why? And randomly I would still go to the gym. I wouldn't change anything. I'd still go swimming. I'd still go to the gym limping, and I'd still work out. And if anything, I'd li- I'd increase the weight even more kind of like giving the, the numbness in my foot, the middle finger, that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And then after like uh, three months, uh, full feeling came back into my foot and it was 100% healed. And so, yeah. So, you know, like I could have gone to the doctor and then there's nothing wrong with that, but I know that the word of God is true. Sorry, one more healing thing. I, maybe it's because I was doing parkour for a while for fun and I had an injury either from weightlifting or parkour. And I injured, I couldn't feel like the whole left side of my, of my arm. Like the left side of my left arm was numb. And people like would get scared. Say, oh, would you have ALS? Did you have a stroke? And what was sad was after that, when I had this injury of not feeling the whole left side of my arm, I would pick up a weight 
and it was like 50% weaker than my right arm. It was very discouraging. I pick up a weight and like, oh, it just dropped. And I couldn't even do, I couldn't do this. My hand was so weak. I couldn't even do this. I couldn't, I couldn't do this. I couldn't feel it. And I couldn't feel, you know, it was, it was numb and painful. So like many times when we're going through stuff, fear can enter our mind, right? And I had some friends that had something similar and they said, oh, you better be careful. The people that were telling me to be careful, unfortunately they were Christian. Sometimes our care can cause fear. Our concern can cause fear. When we care for someone, we should impart faith and not fear, you know? And sometimes we do the opposite unintentionally. So they said, maybe you should, you know, you know, maybe you have ALS. Maybe you had a stroke. You know, these thoughts were in my head. What if I had a stroke? What if I just drank, drank too much beer in my life that messed up with my nerves, you know, or something like that. And then I, I said, no, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And I, and I didn't even pray for my hand. I spoke to it. That's why in Mark 11, 22, 23, it talks about speaking to the mountain. In Mark 11, 22, 23, it says, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. It says, whosoever shall say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in their heart or in their imagination, but shall believe the things that they say, they shall have whatsoever they say. So we can speak to the mountain. And this principle works whether you're a Christian or not a Christian. But if you're a Christian, you have more authority. So one, a Christian who does witchcraft, carries more power than a witch that does witchcraft. A Christian that blesses carries more power than a non-Christian that blesses, right? So, so we, we, we use our words. And the reason why is the Bible says in Ephesians 5, verse 1, to imitate God. It says, be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly beloved children. And Jesus said, the things that I do shall you do also. And what did Jesus do? He spoke to the fig tree. If you want that verse, Evan, it's John 14, verse 12. The things that Jesus did shall we do. And so, and so I started to speak to my hand. I said, hand, I call you strong. And it didn't feel strong. When I spoke to my hand, it was still numb. It was still weak. I still couldn't feel it. But I didn't care because I know the Bible says that I can talk to my hand. I can talk to the mountain and that Christ is in me. You know, it's, faith is of the spirit. It's from your spirit, not from your mind. So even though your mind doubts, your spirit can still believe. Even though your mind doubts, your spirit can still believe because faith is of the spirit. And our faith is a faith that isn't silent, but it speaks. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13, it says, We having the same spirit of faith believe, and therefore we speak. What we believe is what we speak. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. And so... You have enough faith, but you need to bring it out with the word of God. So I just continued to speak to my hand. Hand, I call you whole. And I said, hand, I call you stronger than my right hand. Hand, you are stronger than my right hand. And see, you're not lying to yourself. You're being like God. Because the, God's style is Romans 4, verse 17. And Romans 4, verse 17 says that God calls the things which do not exist as though they exist. God calls that which does not exist as though it exists in Romans 4, 17. When God saw the darkness in Genesis 1, he wasn't like, oh, crap, it's dark. <laughs> he said, let there be light. When Jesus saw a sick man, he didn't say, oh, you sick person, you're going to die. Ha, ha, ha. He said, get up and walk. So he calls the things which don't exist as though they exist. So I call, I'm not lying. I'm going by a higher reality. Yes, in this reality, my hand was numb. But in God's reality, the word of God, I was healed 2,000 years ago. Not will be healed. I was, past tense. First Peter 2.24, past tense. You were healed. So I just kept weightlifting. I kept weightlifting and I kept increasing the weight, kept exercising. Even though I would drop it, <laughs> you know, I would laugh. It wouldn't bother me. And you know what happened? Eventually, like after, I think after five months, it took a while, but I didn't care. The, the numbness didn't bother me because the... Word of God is more real to me than what I feel physically. After five months or so, <clears throat> the feeling came back, the numbness disappeared, and my left hand became stronger than my right hand, literally. I said, I don't just call you healed. I call you stronger than my right hand. Not only that, so God told me to, get, to grow my hair back. 
as a witness. So it has been growing. My hairline was like further up here, but since I left it, it's moved. It's moved to here. So what I did was I found pictures of myself where my hairline was more, and I said that is mine. I say hairline of Mike Reyes. I call you. I call you that of an eighteen-year-old Mike Reyes. Your your scalp scalp of Mike Reyes. I talk to myself. You are beautiful. You are thick. Your hair is luscious, and, and I just you know. And then God taught me something funny in my head. I, and sorry, Evan, this doesn't work in Chinese. It says in the Bible in Romans that we are joint heirs with Christ, right? So I started making a funny, silly rhyme to myself. If I am joint heirs with Christ, I have joint hairs with Christ. Because <laughs> Jesus has a head full of hair. If I am I'm joint heirs with Christ, I have joint hairs with Christ. And it worked. My hairline started growing back. Like it moved from here to there and it's still moving forward that even my non-Christian friends noticed it. My non-Christian friends are like, how come your hairline is moving forward? That Bible is true. Speak to the mouth and it shall be moved because in Christ, instead of life raining on you, reign in life. Romans 5, 17. For Evan. <laughs> For if by the sin of one man, death reigned, which is Adam, because of Adam, death, the earth got screwed because of Adam. How much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Reign in life now. Not in the afterlife, not in the whatever end time view is. Now, in life, you're supposed to reign, even over the weather. You know, in the news recently, they found out that they can change the weather using frequency. It was on Channel News Asia. Uh, and they can, like, they can change the weather using sound. And that, that's my whole industry. I'm not a pastor, but my whole industry works with frequency. So I actually work with the Russian government and some people from the quantum science department of the government of China. Uh, even though I don't speak Chinese yet. In Jesus' name, I'll speak Chinese. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you're not supposed to be bound by, by the world. So there's times where people, yeah, declare to your wrist. There's times where people say, okay, they'll put you in a box. And one of the things that I hate the most, but I've learned to forgive these people, is when people put, put us in a box what, for whatever reason. Maybe they say, because you look this way or because your industry is this way, you will only be able to reach this certain point of success or reach out to these people. And I've learned that in Christ, boxes are meant to be destroyed. You know, you look at Paul, you would think that he would actually reach out to the Jews because he knew the Old Testament. God used him to reach the Gentiles. You look at Peter. <laughs> it works. Yeah, it does work, Kat, with the losing weight. No joke. When you look at Peter, Peter was uneducated, yet God used Peter to reach the educated Jews. So sometimes, many times when God uses you, he'll use you for things that you're not naturally good at so that you depend on his power and not in your own strength. However, there are times that he may use you for things that you are good at too. So we cannot put that rule in, we cannot make that a rule that if you're good at something, God won't use you there. But you also cannot make it a rule that if I'm not good at something, I cannot be used by God. Because when you have no natural to depend on, you have no option but to go supernatural. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 and 10, I'm going to paraphrase this. When I am weak, then I am strong. When I am weak, then I am strong, that the power of Christ may be seen in me or may be perfected in me. Where In my weakness, God's strength is displayed because I have no option to rely on the natural. So I have to go super. You know, everything I'm doing now for work was everything I sucked at in school. I did bad in business in school. I did bad in quantum physics. I didn't have a desire to do math. Everything I'm doing, all my weak subjects is now my job, which is funny, right? The first time I read about quantum physics, I, I thought I was reading Japanese and I don't read Japanese. And God said to me, God reminded me about the time he helped me in school. And see, when you're struggling, wherever you are, remember the breakthroughs that God had done for you before. Because the breakthroughs that God had done for you in the past is a stepping stone for greater breakthrough. And so God reminded me. See, it says the Holy Spirit will remind you things that you forgot. He will bring to your remembrance things Jesus said. He'll lead you into all truth in John chapter. It's either John chapter 14 or John chapter 16 about how the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. 
And he reminded me that when I was in college, I took in university, I had a class in, in statistical, psychological, statistical, psychological testing. And at the time, because I'm older than most of you, um, we didn't have the computer program. So we had to write the formula by hand for our statistical psychological testing. And I had studied for the test. When I took the test, I didn't know the first answer. So I went to the next. Didn't know the, the next answer. So I went to the next. I went throughout the whole entire test, not knowing how to do any of the questions. And I said, oh man, this sucks. But God, you said in James 1, I, I quote him at his word. I said, you said in James 1, that if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously. And I said, God, I ask that you would give me wisdom. I wasn't a lazy ass. I studied, Holy Spirit, give me wisdom to do this psychological statistics. I went back to the first question and it's like the Holy Spirit started to piece in my brain the information that I studied. And then I got it, I went to the next and I ended up getting 100% on the test. So from knowing zero, when, the Holy, when I asked God for wisdom, I ended up getting 100%. That was my first 100% in that class. And that was not my last. Because then I learned how to trust God to speed up my mind. And so when I was studying this stuff on quantum physics for my job, using uh, frequency to repair DNA, um, I, when I first read it, I didn't understand it, even though it was in English. And so after that, I said, Holy Spirit, please help me understand this. Like you helped me in college. Help me understand quantum physics. And as I, as I rested in God and I read it again, I understood it. It was so cool. It was like the Matrix, you know, when when they they don't know how to do kung fu or fly a helicopter, and then what's her name, Trinity, puts the program in Neo's mind, and then all of a sudden he knows how to fly a helicopter. And that's what it literally felt like. Was that God literally downloaded quantum physics into my mind. So this stuff works, you know, even for your secular job, God may lead you to a job that you're not good at. And we may complain and be, oh, God, I'm not good at this. But sometimes God will bring you to something you're not good at because he's teaching you to rely on him. And I have to admit, as I, as I grow in God and as he leads me, it's, it's becomes, it becomes more uncomfortable, honestly. It's not comfortable because he always challenges me to things that I'm not naturally good at. And so what we, what we need to learn to do is how to rely on the supernatural when our natural sucks in it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. How long have I been talking? Okay. Am I slow enough for you, Evan? <laughs> okay. So the thing that we have to be careful is, when, when we're going through, you know, let's say this, this world situation with COVID, right? Uh, we have to be, we have to really take our thoughts captive because our thoughts and our words give off power in the realm of Christianity and also in the realm of darkness. It's like the law of gravity. There are certain, there are certain principles in the spirit realm that work, whether one is Christian or whether one is not. And it will either be powered by a demonic spirit or by the Holy Spirit. And, and one of the things that I love about my job is, is I work not just with scientists, but I work with people in the dark side uh, or people that are, are in a, because uh, a lot of new agers like stuff about frequency. <laughs> so I meet a lot of people that like my products because it speaks their language. Ooh, vibes, frequency. Um, and so I've met, I've met people in dark magic that can change the color of their drink. And I've met them, or they can, or they can make an object lighter. I, I've met kung fu masters that can that can like supernaturally break things that are not supposed to be bent I, in Singapore. And so, okay, so the way I got my job is this. And so we have to be careful with our thoughts because if we listen to the wrong thought, we can kick our own ass. That's why it says uh, in in Second Corinthians ten verse five. Second Corinthians ten verse five that we have to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. We have to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. There was a time uh, when I first came to Singapore uh, where I was just super stressed out. I was burnt out mentally. I was burnt out emotionally. And I started getting the shakes. I, like, I didn't know what that was. And I started getting like thoughts of, I started getting depressed. I started getting the shakes. I started getting 
panic attacks and I never get panic attacks. I never get the shakes and I never get depressed. I was getting depressed. I was getting the shakes. I was getting panic attacks. I was having thoughts of suicide. I was so scared that I would like jump off the building of my condo that I wanted one day when I felt so burnt out emotionally, I wanted to handcuff myself to like one of the metal things in my, in my apartment because I was scared I was going to jump off the building that day. And, and this thing crept up, on, crept up on me so slowly. I didn't know that I was that bad. You know what I mean? I allowed so much mental and emotional stress to get to me to the point where I didn't know that I had broken down. And then I asked, I said, oh, how did I get into the state where I feel like depressed and suicidal? How did I get so emotionally, I was emotionally burnt out. And so the Holy Spirit just led me out of it, you know, step by step, he led me out of it. And he showed me how when I entertained one wrong thought, it allowed other wrong thoughts to come in. See, what the devil does is he, he plants one thought and then he, if you give him an inch, he will take a mile, right? So I learned that I, what was the trigger for me was my anger. Is what was the trigger for my depression was my anger. And, and the depression led to thoughts of uh, bad thoughts of hurting yourself, right? And so what I, what I learned to do is that, that what the Holy Spirit taught me, he said, if you can control one negative emotion, you can control the others. And the root of my, my feeling depressed, my, fe my thoughts of death, the root of that for me was rejection and anger. And so the, the key verse, see, the Holy Spirit will give you key verses to set you free, like a key, a key to unlock your mind from the bondage. And the, and the verse that God gave me, because I realized that I was getting used to punching the wall out of anger because of frustration, which I, I can't mention now because there's other people around me. <laughs> um, I'd be punching the wall. I, I'd go to the stairwell and I would beat up the wall and my fists would come back kind of bruised and, and sometimes a little bloodied because that's how I was dealing with my anger, which was wrong. And so the verse that the Holy Spirit gave me was Proverbs 16, verse 32. Proverbs 16, verse 32 says that if you can, uh, he who is slow to anger is better than the, than the mighty. And the one who controls their emotions or their spirit is better than one who takes a city. Proverbs 16, 32. 32. So, so God said to me, if you want to be, see, God will, knows how to, how to press your buttons. So God says, you want to, you have this machismo attitude. I'm going to press your machismo button. <laughs> And so it says, let me read it in case I got it wrong. It says that he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit or his emotions than he who takes a city. So God said to me, you want to be strong, don't you? You like strength? Then control your anger. Because if you can control your anger, you're stronger than the strong. And God said to me, you want to take a city for me? Then control your emotions. Because if you rule your spirit and your emotions, you can take a city. So I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, God, I, I want to take a city for you. I want to be strong. Well, then control your anger and then rule your spirit. So Holy Spirit helped me. And he just helped me. And, and one of the things that helped me when I, when I couldn't think properly was praying in tongues. <laughs> you know, it says in Romans 8, 26, Romans 8, 26 says, for we do not know how we ought to pray, but the Holy Spirit prays, intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Because there's times where you can't think properly. You, I mean, it's literally like sometimes we've allowed stupid idiot thoughts in our mind that it's so hard to get it out. And when there's times like that, you pray in tongues. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2, there, I won't talk about tongues completely, but it, it says that he who prays in a tongue edifies himself. So that tongues is to allow, it's between you and God, not for everyone to hear. It's between you and God. It says he who prays, prays, not speak, but prays, meaning between you and God in a tongue, you build yourself up or to charge oneself up. Like when a building is broken down, if you look at it in the Greek, it's like edificio, edifice, where to build up something that is broken. So praying in tongues will help you clear your mind so you can get into the word. Um, so one of the, um, okay, sorry. Hey, Kat, if I get lost, remind me. Uh, I just want to do a side note. So, so God is funny. So or, I'm talking about taking your thoughts captive. Praying in tongues helps you get free. So one of the heart, the things that I have in my heart is for those that are in the underworld, you guys know that I like, I have a heart for those in the underworld and also for those in the dark, in the, in, that are in witchcraft. I also have a heart for those that are very conservative and they don't believe in the gifts of the spirit. They're cessationist, but they're hungry for God. <laughs> so th those are the things that I have a heart for. 
And ironically, in Singapore, most of the people I minister to don't speak English. They're Chinese speaking. So when Evan comes here, Evan, you're going to help me preach. Because <laughs> most of the people I, I end up reaching out to here are speak Hokkien, Cantonese, uh, Hakka, Teochew, and some Mandarin. That's the irony. I don't speak Chinese at all. And most of the people I minister to are Chinese, not Christian Chinese. <clears throat> but I was invited to this one Methodist church in Singapore. And I was invited to their conservative service. And uh, the pastor is a secret charismatic. He's the senior pastor of a Methodist church. And he said to me, I'm doing an encounter night. And I'm inviting you to preach in the Chinese service in the conservative one where they don't believe in tongues, healings, and miracles. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> and you'll be translated in Mandarin. And, and so I was like, wonderful. So he said, you have to talk more slowly. I'm like, I will try. Slow button, slow button. <laughs> and so uh, when I spoke there, I spoke like a Methodist. <laughs> you know, I, I changed my style. The reason I changed my style is the Bible says to be all things to all men, right? So we may reach them. So the way I talk to you guys, I'm more comfortable with you guys. I don't talk there. I, I'm more refined, more refined. <laughs> I had to wear a tie. It was like choking me. And so I spoke the Bible verses and I, so, I showed the scripture. See, if you want to reach people that are conservative, you have to show it in the Bible because yes, you may have the gift, but they may just think you're using witchcraft. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to show the scripture, which is why I'm so specific about scripture because there's power in the word of God. And so after I, I gave the scripture uh, for it in this Methodist church, we sang hymns. It was, it's like full-on conservative. I gave words of knowledge in a conservative way. I said, well, if there may be someone here that um, has nightmares, and I called it, I think, like 12 words of knowledge. There was a group of about 100, and they all came up. Uh, it's COVID now, so we have to go up in, in a, what do you call it, uh, in rows. And, and so I prayed for them in a very, very, very conservative way. I said, may I lay my hand on you? Or, or if you don't want me to touch you, I won't touch you. Everything's translated in Chinese. And so I, 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 I did it in my Methodist style. And the funny thing was people were falling down and no one was catching them because they didn't expect people to fall. So I had to catch them. I was like, whoa. And I, I wasn't expecting people to fall down. And then, and then people were, were coming up. Uh, they went to the cafeteria initially when I was done. Then they went back. And then they said, oh, I thought this was bullshit. But then when Mike prayed for me, I got healed. And so one of them is like a 25-year-old banker. She said, I thought, I thought this was like fake. It was only on TV. But then I got healed. And then one lady came up and, and said, you know, like, uh, I don't know what happened. But when I got prayed for, I felt like I was out of my body in the heavens. I mean, I got jealous because that's never happened to me. And these guys who are conservative and skeptical of the Holy Spirit got a better experience than I have. I was jealous. <laughs> but, but it was just so cool, you know, that the fact that their mind was closed, but their heart was hungry. So what I've learned with, with God is even though someone's mind may not be open, it says that God looks at the heart. He doesn't look at the mind. He looks at the heart. So when I, when I meet people that are in the supernatural realm, like one of my, my customers, uh, if I share this before, please let me know, Kat. But I think a lot of you haven't heard this. One of my main customers uh, for my products is a Thai psychic. Can I share this? The Thai psychic? I did? Where everyone was, was, was cropping blood? No. Okay. So I had a business meeting uh, with my Thai psychic and one of my distributors from Indonesia. Uh, Chinese Indonesian guy who's a Christian, but a, very, a bit of a weak Christian because he has a gambling addiction. <laughs> So we met at Marina Bay Sands because he's a high roller. So he gets free, free food at the restaurant and hotels stay for free at Marina, Marina Bay Sands. So, so I met uh, this Thai psychic. And, and at the time, my business partner didn't know Jesus yet. He, my business partner knows Jesus now. And so we went there. And, and what we were going to do was the Thai psychic was going to give us all the reading. And I was asking God, God, how, do I, how shall I do this? I don't want to be like, no, I'm a Christian. Don't give me a reading. I want to use this as an opportunity to glorify your name. And God said to me, don't look at her demons, look at her heart. And so after that, we made a deal because they know that I have a gift too, right? But they don't know I'm Christian. So they said, okay, so master of so-and-so, they call her master because she's like a master in psychic reading. We we'll read, and she's from Thailand. And then, and then after master so-and-so gives the reading, Michael Reyes will give us a reading. <laughs> I'm like, wonderful. So she goes first because, you know, respect. 
because they know her. So she gives reading for companies. She gives psychic readings for companies, for individuals. And so after she gave them a reading, since she gets possessed by like a 2000 year old monk, it's quite interesting. So we were in, in the in the Japanese, we had a, a, a VIP room in the Japanese restaurant. So when, she had to get possessed by the monk first. So when the monk came into her, her body, it like, or the demon, her face changes, dude, like a man. It's pretty freaky. It's kind of funny, actually. Like, ooh. And then after that, um, she started giving everybody a reading. So my distributor in Indonesia, after she gave him a reading, he went to the bathroom for like 20 minutes and came back. After she gave my business partner a psychic reading, she had her bells and other, I call it Buddhist bling bling, her, her bling bling. Uh, he, he went to the bathroom for 20 minutes. And I said, how come you guys go to the toilet for so long after the reading? And they, and they said, oh, because we're shitting blood. We're punk sighing blood <laughs> for 20 minutes. I'm like, why are you guys punk sighing blood? Why are you guys crapping blood? They said, oh, we're, we're, we're shitting out the evil energy. Like we're getting rid of the evil energy. So I thought they were shitting me. Just kidding. <laughs> so I went to the toilet to check. And no joke, dude, the toilet was full of blood. It was weird, man. Uh, this is in Singapore. So then it was my turn to get a psychic reading. And see, a lot of times when Christians see this, like, oh, how come your distributor, a Christian, he shitted blood? Or oh, maybe you might shit blood too. I'm like, no, because I know what the Bible says about me. The Bible says that Jesus, uh, God said, my people die. My people perish because of a lack of knowledge. My people die. Bad things happen to my people because they don't know what belongs to them. I'm paraphrasing Hosea 4 verse 6. So it was my turn to get my psychic reading. So I went, and then she got possessed by the monk. This was a business meeting, right? Did her bling, bling, bell thing. Put this bling, bling, bell thing on me. And honestly, she does have a gift. She said things about me that no one knows. She even said about, like, I saw you on the news in Philippines for threatening someone. I mean, like, pretty interesting stuff, you know? Like, I see that you you are, have a good heart, but you beat up some people before. I mean, you know, so, so it was pretty accurate. And... um. And uh, even about things about my past, even about my grandma, she said, oh, your grandma, is in I'm not trying to glorify the dark side, but this lady does have an actual gift. But then she prophesied about my future and she was wrong. She told my business partner that I would be hospitalized three times that year. I was never hospitalized at all, never even got sick. So my business partner a year later told me she was wrong about the bad things happening to you. It never happened. And he said, I learned now that our fate is not in, in is in God's hands if we trust him. So when he changed. So then after that, I, my friend's like, do you guys, do you need to go to the bathroom? I'm like, no, maybe need a fart. No, I didn't even need a fart. I was fine. <laughs> and so after that, I didn't punk side blood at all. I was good. So I said, okay, my turn. <laughs> so then I asked God, God, how do you want me? Holy Spirit? See, he's there. He's always there with you. I said, Holy Spirit, in my thoughts, how do you want me to approach this? And Holy Spirit said to my, my heart, my thoughts, pray over her daughter because her 12 year old daughter was with us as well. And so I, I said, I, her daughter's name is Patty. So I said, Patty, uh, is it okay if I master so-and-so, is it okay if I read your daughter first? I said, Patty, I feel that you have a stronger gift than your mother. Since you were born, you can see spirits. And then Patty started giggling. And I said to Patty, Patty, when I came in the room, you saw something behind me. Actually, when I said that, I wasn't even thinking it just came out of my mouth. You know, when you flow with God, things just come out of your mouth that you don't know. And Patty started giggling. They don't know I'm a Christian. They have no idea I'm a Christian. And then Patty goes, I saw a man of light walking behind Mike. And then she says to her mama in Thai, he has the spirit of Jesus in him. I'm like, oh, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> like a Thai psychic saw that I have the spirit of Jesus in me. That made me feel so good. <laughs> and then after that, I prayed for master, master so-and-so. I don't want to say her name because she's my friend and she might listen to this. And then I saw like five Angmo boyfriends because she has like, she's pretty. She has like a lot of boyfriends. And I said how God wants to heal her heart. And then after that, I prayed for her and she got healed. She had pain in her stomach, ovary area. And the power of God was on her so strong that she couldn't move. She got stuck and healed. We had to carry her back to her hotel room because she was frozen because of the power of God. She said, there's something on you. And when it's on me, it's very good, but it feels very heavy, <laughs> but it feels good. And I said, oh, Master so-and-so, interesting, because the Bible talks about God's glory like weight. It's like a heaviness, a present. So, yeah. So, but see, I have other Christian friends that they try to do this stuff, 
and they're like, oh, when the when the psychic read me, I was sick for days. <laughs> I said, because you're more focused on the demon. And, and you know, master so-and-so, I wasn't looking at her demon. I was looking at her heart. And I know that she has a good heart and she's really seeking God. She calls me from Thailand. But every time I pray for her, she gets healed instantly <laughs> on the spot. You know, every time she gets healed, she has a vision of Jesus. And then she started sending us hill songs, stuff from Bethel. She started listening to praise and worship. And she said, I want to stop being a psychic. I want to have a normal business. She said, every time I do my psychic business, I get attacked by spirits. She said, how come you don't get attacked, Mike? I said, well, because Jesus is my shield. I don't use my power. I use his power. So anyway, okay, that, that was too long. Sorry, I went too long on that story. But, but the point of that is, um, what was the point? Is, you know, when, when you hear about Christians ministering to people on the dark side and they get bad, bad attacks, like a, a revenge attack from the devil, don't let that discourage your faith. Because many times the way God has made me is when I hear that, that they got attacked or hurt, I'm going to attack that too. <laughs> so, you know, to show that, no, it, it doesn't matter. If it, they Honestly, a lot of the people that are used by God are way more sanctified than me. I am so imperfect in so many ways. <laughs> but my trust is not based on, on, my, on my works or even my character, to be honest with you, but on what Christ has done. But I have to admit, when God uses me, it also makes me want to be a man of better character because I don't want to be a bad example, <laughs> right? I don't want to make people stumble. So him using me also causes me to, to change. Okay, let me, since we're all, friends here pretty much um it doesn't matter where you are god can use you and i, I want to share about a time where where i just wanted to have fun and uh not care about god uh, and just do my own thing and have fun so there was one time i won't say what year it was and i won't say what country when i just wanted to be rebellious and there was one time i was in this club and there was like there were these girls they're they're hot and then one girl, these, there was one girl started dancing with me and I, I, I could feel something. I mean, yeah, I mean, sorry, not to be nasty, but, but it's, I could feel the Holy Spirit in the midst of me wanting to be rebellious. And while I was, while I was like trying to dirty dance with that person that was dirty dancing with me, I had like a thought that came into my head and I just said, okay, stop. Okay. Stop dancing. And this was me being rebellious. So I don't copy this example. And then, and then I said, are you married? And, and you, and you just left your husband. She's like, yeah, how did you know? I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's a word of knowledge while I'm trying to sin. <laughs> so, and then I said, oh man, then, then I said, well, you know, I said, God knows about the brokenness in your heart and your marriage. And, and you've been actually trying, you're a Christian, right? She's like, yeah, how did you know? I'm like, oh dude, she's a Christian. And you've been asking God to fix your marriage and you're angry that things didn't work out. So in the end, I, ended, I stopped my sinning and I ended up prophesying to her. <laughs> and, then, and then she and then she, uh, yeah, she changed. Now, here's the funny, guys. Some of you went to TNT, right? Years later, probably like six years later, I bump into her with her husband in TNT. <laughs> Not saying who it is. So uh, the, the point why I'm saying this is, is that, you know, I don't want people to think, oh, Mike Reyes is so perfect. He's never sinned or, or like, because I will never have faith like Mike. It's not about Mike. It's all about Jesus. It's, it's not about, it's about who he says we are, you know, in spite of us. So, no, no be like Christ, not Mike. <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh. Okay, sorry, Evan. I think I got carried away and I talked too fast. So sorry about that. That's why we have to be careful with all the news that we're hearing. We have to be careful what we're listening to. Because what we hear will put us in faith or fear. What you hear will put you in faith or fear. That's why it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. But you know what? Fear also comes by hearing as well. Not just fear, but lust. Every, every bad anger, you know, comes from hearing as well. All the negative things also come by hearing and seeing. But if you can control one negative emotion, the Holy Spirit said to me, you can control the rest. So when the Holy Spirit helped me control my anger, the depression left. The thoughts of death left. I'm not saying it's the same for everyone. If you can control, control the depression, you can control your anger. You can control one negative emotion, you can control the rest. Control one negative emotion, you can control the rest. In a weird way, you, you can control anger, you can even control lust. 
it, it works, you know, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, um, ah, yeah. So we have to guard our heart. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Proverbs 4, verse 23 says, guard your heart, for from your heart flow the wellsprings of life. If you look at the word heart, it also means seat of imagination and emotion. So when the Bible says to guard your heart, it's to protect your mind, right? Like I said earlier, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So when we, one thing I've learned um, to be more Christ-like and, and also to walk in the supernatural is when I have one negative thought, don't resist it by letting it linger. Was it Atlantis Morris said? So you have to let it linger. You have to, you have to, you have to let it linger. <laughs> You don't resist, yeah, by lingering. You don't resist it by lingering. You don't ignore it. You speak. When Jesus was tempted, what did he do? When Jesus was tempted, he, in, in the book of Luke, he said, it is written. It is written. So when you have a negative thought, I, um, I had, okay, so when I actually had the thing with my hand getting numb, I actually had thoughts of like, in my head, it was super subtle. The devil is not an idiot. He's, in some ways, he's very intelligent in a bad way. I would have a subtle thought like, or oh, what if I ever got a numbness or a stroke? It's like a, it was a thought. And I didn't get rid of that thought. And because I didn't get rid of that thought, about a week or two later or a month later, the whole right side of my left hand became numb. It's like what I feared had come upon me because I didn't take that thought captive. So we shouldn't let it linger. When, when you have a negative thought or something is playing in your mind, you address it with the word of God. You speak. You have to speak it. Faith comes by hearing, especially when it's from your own mouth. You cannot, you cannot think one thing and say another thing at the same time. So if you have a thought of death, speak life. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Uh, last week, um, I love cooking. I suck at it. So I watch Mickey's cooking videos <laughs> and others uh, and ask her for cooking advice. I still haven't tried to lap you properly yet. Properly yet. I'm still trying on the tilapia. So anyway, I love cooking, right? And last week when I was cooking uh, for, I think it was for me and my dad or me and my friends, I, I burned the outside too quickly. And when I chomped on the chicken, it was still really, really bloody inside. <laughs> and it was like, got stuck in my teeth because it wasn't cooked yet. I'm like, oh no. And I had already swallowed like two pieces of the bloody chicken. And then I'm like, and then after, right, shortly after that, I was cooking, what was it? Uh, fish and I did the same mistake to the fish I cooked it too fast and when I bit into the fish it was still bloody inside and I'd already swallowed like a piece of the bloody fish uncooked fish right uh, and then I started feeling nauseous like vomiting <laughs> and my friends were like Mike you you okay <laughs> you're right like you bit into like raw meat and it wasn't steak you know you don't bite into raw chicken and I, I started getting nauseous and I don't know if the nauseousness was because I, 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 because of the food or because of my thoughts, but I, I spoke to myself. I'm like, nope. The Bible says in Mark 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, we will drink deadly poison and it shall not hurt us. It doesn't mean you drink poison on purpose, but and then I reminded myself, I will drink deadly poison and it shall not hurt, hurt me according to the word, according to Luke 10, verse 18 and 19. Luke 10, verse 18 and 19. Nothing shall by any means injure me. Even bloody meat that has salmonella shall not injure me. So I literally went to the bathroom and I spoke to myself. I, I said, nothing shall by any means injure me. And, by, and, and the nauseousness and the feeling of vomiting, because my face was turning white and brown. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be white, you know, because of feeling nauseous, it went away. My skin color came back to normal and I continued eating the steamboat. <laughs> So there's power in the word. There's power, even though you're going through it, you can speak. There's power in the word. And the Holy Spirit is the one to make sure that the word of God comes to pass. The Holy Spirit in you will bring to pass the word that you speak. What he did then, he's doing now. In Genesis chapter 1, God, it says that the, the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the deep. The spirit of God was like hovering like how a hen is over her chickens hovering or like a hen nesting her eggs was what it meant and god spoke so when god spoke the holy spirit brought those words into reality so when you 
speak God's word in faith, the Holy Spirit will bring those words to pass. Because what he did then, he is doing now. In Jeremiah 1 verse 12, in Jeremiah 1 verse 12, it says, for I am watching over my word to perform it. I am watching over my word to make sure it happens. And if, he, if God was watching over his word to make it happen then, in Jeremiah 1 verse 12, he's watching over his word to, to perform it now. Because it says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever in Hebrews 13 verse 8. So, yes. So what you're struggling in, find the word of God in, and speak it. And speak it with the Holy Spirit, and then he will bring it to pass. And if you don't believe what you speak, keep speaking until you believe it, because faith comes by hearing. If you don't believe the Bible, then speak it till you believe it. And if you don't believe it yet, then act on it. John G. Lake said this. It is easier. John G. Lake is not in the Bible. This is John G. Lake, but there's truth to this, because in James, it says that faith without works is dead. We're not saved by works. When we act in our faith, it brings it to completion. John G. Lake said, it is easier to act oneself into believing than to believe oneself into acting. You get that? It is easier to act oneself. It is easier, in other words, to take action so that you believe than to believe in order to take action. It's a principle, you know? It's like when I feel sad and down, and not like rejoicing, I choose to rejoice because the joy of the Lord is in me, and the fruit of the spirit, right? Galatians 5.22. Joy is beyond happiness because it's deeper, but in joy, you do laugh. God laughs at his enemy, Psalm 2. So there's times where I just feel down and I just choose to rejoice in God. Rejoice. No, I just laugh. I laugh at my enemies. I laugh at the sickness. I laugh at the circumstance because God is good. I can laugh because God is good and it looks retarded. If no one's around, it looks socially retarded, but I just laugh. I choose to laugh, even though I don't feel like laughing, because I choose to rejoice in the Lord. And it changes things. It really does. And there's times where I fell down, and I start laughing, and then God gives me an idea of breakthrough in business. I thought that was, uh, yeah. So it's silly, but it works, because you're acting in faith. You're not acting according to your emotions, but you're causing your emotions to follow your spirit. Emotions are not bad. They're great, but they're a bad leader. Don't let your emotions lead you. Let the spirit of God lead your emotions. Emotions are wonderful. God has emotions, but let the spirit be the leader of your emotions or you'll kick your own butt. Okay. Um, okay. Um, hmm, oh, where shall I go? I have too much information. Okay. Uh Okay, let me talk a bit about, about business. So all the testimonies I'm sharing take place through business. All the testimonies I've shared so far have not taken place in church. I have testimonies in church, but I like the ones in the marketplace better. <laughs> so that you guys, when you guys do your business, I want you guys to expect signs and wonders, healings and miracles. I want you guys to expect words of knowledge. And, and uh, you know, okay, let, let me just rewind a bit. So about 20... 17 years ago, when I was still a youth pastor, which is not my calling, I'm glad I'm not a pastor anymore, but those who are pastors, God bless you, it is very difficult if you're not called. <laughs> if you're a pastor and you have a calling, it's a wonderful calling, let me just say that, out of respect for pastors. When I was a youth pastor then, I went to this uh, prophetic meeting, and uh, this guy, who's a prophetic guy, he's not strong in the word, but he's very strong in, in the prophetic. So much so that he became a multimillionaire because God told, tells him where to invest. And his kid is the lawyer, is now an inventor. And his kid, who was like 12 at the time, got his invention because the Holy Spirit showed it to him. So anyway, I went to this guy's meeting for prayer. And this guy prophesied over me about 17 years ago. And one of my friends who's in the Air Force was now in the Air Force uh, uh, was with me then. And, and past, his name is Pastor Caleb. Maybe you guys know him if you've been to Singapore. So Pastor Caleb, he's actually not a pastor. He's a stockbroker. He goes to me, God, I see you riding a golden dragon. He said, I see you riding a golden dragon and God is going to use you to touch China. You're going to ride a golden dragon and God is going to use that golden dragon that you're riding on to touch China. And God is going to use you to touch Russia. And when I heard that prophecy, I said, false prophecy. I have no heart for China and I have no heart for Russia. 
17 years later, guess what I'm doing? <laughs> I work with China and Russia now. Those are the main countries I work with. Funny, right? <laughs> and so God said to me, with God, all things are possible, right? And the door that God has opened, no one can shut. So God said to me, I'm going to open a door for you, which no one can shut. Revelations 3, verse 8. Revelations 3, verse 8. If you walk through the door God has opened for you, no one can shut it. God said, I'm going to surprise you because I'm going to use you to touch the Chinese, even though you don't speak any Chinese at all. <laughs> so to so some of the business people that I do business with in China, um, they, they don't know I'm a Christian, but they heard that I have a gift. So I, I'll, I'll end up prophesying or healing them on the phone, some of my, my clients, and they'll get healed. And they said, how did you do the healing? Are you a psychic master? I said, no, I do it through Yesu, Jesus. <laughs> so my friend is translating for me because I don't speak Chinese. And so some of my, 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 my business clients, my clients in China are now Christian. And I didn't meet them through the church. I met them through, through drinking. And I, I learned to never drink in business with people from China because they will out drink you. <laughs> oh, man. That's the first time I met them was over my tie. I'm like, no, I don't drink. I don't know how to play the game bluff. Evan would know that the bluff game with the dice. If you lose, you got to drink. Anyway, so that's how I met them. But through business, they got saved. When I took the business meeting as an opportunity, because there were times where we were stuck in our business and we didn't know what to do. There was a time where we needed a machine and the machine cost 5,000 euro. And, I, and, and at the time my business partner was a Christian, he's Chinese. And he said, I said, hey, why don't we pray? Why don't we pray, try praying to Jesus and see what happens? Because we didn't have the money to buy this 5,000 euro machine. So he, my business partner and I prayed together, Jesus, we don't have enough money. <laughs> for this machine. We asked that somehow you would bless us with this machine. So he repeated it after me in Jesus name. Amen. 10 minutes later, a friend of his call, a friend of my business partner calls him and says, Dr. So-and-so, do you need this 5,000 something, something machine, 5,000 euro machine? And, and he said, yes. How do you know? So we prayed at 3 PM in the afternoon. Now this lady who's his friend, who's a philanthropist is a Christian. She said in the morning when I was spending time with God, the Holy Spirit told me to give you guys this 5,000 euro machine. We prayed in the afternoon at 3 p.m. God told her to give us the machine in the morning. So God answered our prayer ahead of time, even when we hadn't even prayed yet. So we have so many business miracles. And then after that, like my, my business partner's like, wow, this Jesus thing like really works, huh? Like, because because before with our business partners, they would go to every freaking temple you could think of. Like they visit all the temples. They do the thing where they, they stab themselves with the swords and they go to visit all these different, I would just go along with them, right? But I'd be like, I was just waiting my turn to kick ass through Jesus name and real show who the real God is, you know? <laughs> you know, the thing with Elijah and Baal, I long for that where, where it's like a power encounter. And I see that a lot in my business because I, I meet a lot of supernatural people. You know, where it's a power encounter. It's fun, you know, especially in the first world. In Singapore, it's quite different because because when I meet like one of my clients is a feng shui master, um, you know, feng shui. Uh, so so she's a she has a really good heart. So we had a business meeting with her, her daughter, who's one of my, my customers, because a lot of customer, a lot of TCM doctors, traditional Chinese medicine practitioners use my products. So one of the traditional Chinese medicine uh, customers of mine were, was talking to me. She says, you know, Mike, um, sometimes when I do my TCM on people or the acupuncture, I get sick also. So this lady, uh, I won't say her name. She's one of my friends now, my customer. She also, not, she's not just good at TCM, but she has an intuitive gift of how to treat people. She has nearly 100% success rate as a TCM doctor. She's a really good doctor. And she said, but sometimes I get sick also. And I have this pain here. Like when she treated someone with some weird arm pain, she's, she told me like their negative energy jumps on her and she gets in pain as well. And I said to Dr. So-and-so, I can help you. I have something like you is different. And she goes, oh, she said, uh, what kind of, how, how is your chi different? <laughs> and I said, oh, my chi is different. I made, I wanted to make a joke and say, my chi is from heaven. It's chi sus. <laughs> but anyway. So I said, yeah, I don't use my own chi. I, I'm a medium because she understands what medium is, right? I say, I'm a medium of God's power because her other auntie is a Chinese temple medium. 
so they understand the word medium. So I put my hand on Nancy and I say, in the, in the name of Yesu, be healed. And the pain completely left. Oh, shoot, I said her name. Okay, it's okay. And so, so Nancy goes, um, how did you do that? All the pain's gone. It's like, the power's different from the, from the kind of chi power that I feel. I said, yeah, it's Jesus. <laughs> I said, it's Yesu. Uh, I said, I, I don't charge because uh, Jesus healed you. And she said, can I also learn how to do this? Like, yeah. And if you were with a relationship with Jesus, I didn't say Christian. I said, I didn't say for sake your religion. When you get to know Jesus, he can use you also. So one of my TCM doctors started reading the Bible and her other client who's a Feng Shui master also like will call me for prayer. <laughs> so I have Feng Shui masters calling me for prayer and I'm not forcing them to convert. All you do is you demonstrate Jesus. And, and what I found is, is they change on their own, you know, because many times it's like, one of my, one of the people I ministered to in Singapore, um, so one of my, one of my, uh, my associates, he's an in artificial intelligence and he's automating my machine, my quantum machine. And he's a Christian. He's a cell leader at City Harvest. And he said to me, Mike, um, I see how God has given you favor with Chinese speaking people that don't like Jesus. He goes, my mom is a temple medium and psychic. His mom is 89 years old. Can you hope for my mom? Every time my mom, every time I bring my pastor or my Christian leaders to pray for me, she makes fun of them and she laughs at them at their face. <laughs> and since the mom is kind of psychic, she'll kind of reveal some dirty laundry of theirs, of their hidden sin. <laughs> It's kind of funny. Uh, mom will be like one cell leader. Oh, you come say Jesus, but you were looking at whatever last night at 2 a.m. <laughs> so that's what the mother, his mother does to intimidate Christians. And she, and then the mother, and then the mother said to her son, why do I need Jesus? I already have psychic power, which is true. People come to his mother for fortune telling. It's like, I don't need Jesus. You're Christian. You're a Christian friend. I have more power than them. She said that I have more power than your Christian friends. So sometimes you really got to move in the Holy Spirit power. I, I, let me not say sometimes, all the time, because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 20, that the kingdom of God, in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 20, the kingdom of God does not consist in talk alone, but in power. Boom. So anyway, so I went to see the, um, my, my, my associate's uh, Chinese medium, mommy. So we go to the house and the mother is like, you know, expecting me to, I don't know, be a pastor. I said, no, I'm a, an associate of your son. Everything's translated in Cantonese. Everything's in Cantonese, which I don't speak. So at first she, she say, she's like making fun of, of Christians. She, she's saying, ha ha, my son's pastor just got out of jail. Ha ha ha. <laughs> so just making jokes, right? And uh, she sounds like a, like a dragon lady. She has such a strong, strong voice. Her Cantonese is like she's, she's a general. And then um, after that, she goes, she didn't even give me a chance to talk initially. She goes, oh, I will read your friend. So she did the same thing. She read my fortune. So my friend's mom read my fortune and she go, he, and she, it's pretty accurate. He goes to me, my mom has a gift, but it's from the dark side. <laughs> the mom's house. Every time people have come to the house of the, of people that are new, if they stay for a few days, they always break their arm. There's, there's weird supernatural things that happen at their house where people end up getting an accident. Uh, so that's why some of like some of the pastors that ministered at his mom's house, after they met, well, they didn't get to minister because she kind of cut off their spiritual balls by like using their psychic power to say they were looking at something naughty. <laughs> they would have something bad happen to them after they would go to the house. So anyway, I went there to the house and, and see when I go to this thing, I'm not coming in my righteousness or in, in my grace. I'm coming in the name of Jesus. I'm not coming based on me. I'm not even going based on my faith. I'm going based on who Christ is because the Bible says that we are one spirit with God. One. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He or she who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with God. So I go there knowing that I am one spirit with God. And as I went there, she started doing her psychic things. Pretty good. She was pretty good. I mean, I mean, it's a demonic spirit, right? Yep. But she definitely has a gift. She said things that no one could know. And then I said, okay, auntie, now my turn, right? So you have a gift. I also have a gift. And then I had a picture of like a lot of guys courting her. I said, Auntie, when you were young, you were quite beautiful. <laughs> so, I, said, I mean, sorry, Auntie, you're still beautiful. <laughs> anyway, so God showed me some things about her. And sometimes God will use a prophetic joke to open up their heart. And then her husband started laughing. Her husband used to be a triad leader in Singapore. And her husband started laughing. And, and then he said something in Cantonese. 
And my friend Joseph said to me, my dad is laughing because two weeks ago, there were three guys that were staying in our, in our unit, uh, three tenants uh, that were paying rental. And my dad thought that they were in love with his wife. So he got a parang. You know what a parang is? It's like a machete and chased them out of the house. And I had to call the police to stop my dad from chopping these guys up. <laughs> so anyway, the dad was laughing and said he just chased three guys that had a crush on his wife with a big knife. Then after that, I, I just got open the door. I said, auntie, you want healing for free? So long story short, after I prophesied, the prophetic word opened up her heart to receive healing. Then after that, uh, she got healed. She couldn't walk without pain, completely healed. Then her husband asked Jesus in her heart. And then she said, I will go with you to the Chinese speaking service to her son. So that opened the door for Jesus to come into her heart. Now I don't speak Chinese. And, 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 and I met her through business. So, you know, the way God may use you may not be the way you think. The way God will open the door for you may not be the way you think. You know what I mean? So be open because God is creative. He may, he may use you in such a way that you don't expect. Uh, even for some of your parents that don't know Jesus, some, some of you are waiting for a great man or woman of God to, to minister to them. But, may, but maybe God is waiting for you to be that man or woman of God to touch your parents' hearts. Um, okay, I won't say his name because you guys might know him. He goes to CCF. I won't say his name, but I'll say his story. <laughs> I hope I don't say his name by accident. Uh, so one of my friends who, who in the Philippines, uh, he was asking how he could reach out to his father. He goes, my family is like a company. It's not a family. My dad has not said I love you to me since I was like five years old. He hasn't even given me a hug since I was like a kid. But I don't, I want to have a heart to reach out my dad, uh, to my dad. He goes to CCF. If you hear the story, then you know who he is. <laughs> a, good, a good friend of mine. So, so he, said, he said, I said to him, why don't you ask God for wisdom on how to reach your dad? Because God will give you divine strategy to touch people. He'll give you strategy. So the first thing that he did was he started just playing golf with his dad. He said, hey, dad, want to go play golf? Then he just started playing golf with his dad. And then after that, he just started having meals with his dad once a week. Then, then, he, then, then with his mom, then alone. And then the dad just opened up to him. The dad just opened up his heart. And then, and then in the mornings, he just felt led to kiss his dad on the forehead and, and say goodbye. I mean, he's Akong already. He's already a grandfather, the father. And then, and then the father... And then he became out of, I can't remember how many brothers he had. I think he has six brothers. He became the favorite son <laughs> and all his brothers got jealous. But because of him just doing these little acts of kindness, God opened the father's heart to the gospel through the son that started doing these small acts of kindness. Even though the father has not said, I love you or given him a hug, he talks very roughly and treats the sons like they're in a company instead of children. God gave my friend the wisdom on how to slowly open up his father's heart. So sometimes it's something so simple, you know? Have a tea with your dad. Have a beer with, maybe not beer, I don't know. Ask the Holy Spirit. Go work out with your father. Um, he'll give you divine strategy. So, um, yeah. You don't always have to bring him to a conference. You are the conference. You are the man and woman of God. He will give you, he wants them saved more than you desire to be saved. More than you desire for them to be saved, he wants them saved. Okay, in closing, Shoot. it's 9 25 already um for this year I, I want you i want you guys to expect big yes there's been many prophecies going around but for me prophecy or not the way i think is how, is, is what the bible says i believe in my people say what is your vision i said my vision is to reach the government for jesus to reach the Singapore government, the China government, the Russian government, and businessmen and mafia people to bring in the kingdom of God where it's not there. And you know, it's happening. I have friends in Singapore, and I can't say their name, obviously, that are in, um, in government positions high in the military, and, and they have a humble heart. They, they're, they don't want the position for the sake of ego. They were wanting to use their government position to bring in the glory of Jesus and to bring in the kingdom of God. I have a friend that was quite low, and now he's next to the, the ministry. He's really, he's nearly second in command, not yet second in command, but he's so close to the minister, to the, the, the position of, uh, of the defense minister. And the people that he works with are like a-holes, <laughs> and they quit. But then God is using him to change the Singapore military. 
and he's moving in prophecy and healing in the Singapore military. So God can use you to change the government. Nothing is impossible with God. Uh, I mean, like, in, I don't have enough time, but another time I'll share about the underworld in Singapore, how the underworld and the government here are sometimes linked and how God has given me an open door with a Chinese triad in Singapore to minister and lead them to Christ. That'll be another time. Hey guys, like Kat was saying, I can't see the chat because I'm using my cell phone because my computer is too slow to do Zoom. So now I want to want to pray for some people. So I didn't see all the stuff that you guys are writing down. So now that we have like, Mike, yeah, a bit of time, share, I'd like to pray for some for, people. Can you share for uh for a bit about the bulldog kind of faith? Maybe other people are losing faith because of. Okay, a bulldog kind of faith. Yeah, just okay, short. Sorry. But, okay, the bulldog. Sure, sure. Okay, so the bulldog kind of faith is is a is is a kind of faith where I mean it's, a, it's not in the Bible the word bulldog, but it's a term I like to use. Bug dead, bulldog. Yeah, bug is dead. Yeah, <laughs> the bulldog kind of faith is where you believe when all odds are against you. It's like when everything seems like it's going wrong, that you still believe the word of God anyway. Um, yeah, it's like choosing to believe when everything else in the physical looks like the exact opposite of what you're believing for. You still don't waver in faith. Um, like, like, uh, gosh, okay, let me let me give an example with um, with business. No one's around. So, with the business I'm in initially, I, I was getting offered a few jobs, and I was getting an offer for a job for a five figure salary in Singapore. A friend of mine said to me, oh, I feel like God wants you to join my company. I'm going to pay you five figures and you're going to be the senior manager of this eco-friendly engineering. He said that God told him. I prayed about it and God did not tell me <laughs> the same. And so I decided to join the company that I'm, I'm joining now with no money because we couldn't, we're a startup. We couldn't afford to pay, each, pay ourselves, right? Now, a lot of people think, Oh, if it's God, there'll be money involved. Not always. Sometimes God may lead you to something that doesn't make money yet or make money. <laughs> I don't know. But but then I, I so I turned down the five-figure salary for no pay to work for a company for a startup. Uh, uh, but because of working for the startup, I'm getting more blessed now than when I took the five-figure salary. But not but but I didn't get a salary. I Okay, let me rephrase. I can't too, too, too many secrets. Uh, but I, um, how do you say this? Uh, we were working for a salary without a salary for a very, 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 very long time. So basically, we're both working for free, me and my business partner, right? But the fruit of the kingdom of God was amazing. I saw more people healed. And say, I've seen more healings and miracles in Singapore, in the city, among the Chinese triad, than I did in the Philippines. I saw a Chinese triad deaf guy get healed in his ear in Singapore. Um, and this is a city. People don't think these miracles happen in the city. But I've been seeing more healing signs and wonders in the city doing business in Singapore with the Chinese than I did in the Philippines. Because as we grow in God, we're supposed to see more and more. It's not like, oh, I'm in the city. Honestly, in the city, it does take more faith. Because in third world countries, usually because they're more simple, the people that are poor believe more easily because of the culture. But in Singapore, they'll be like, BS, bull, 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 doesn't work. Fake religion. I don't need it. A lot of my Singapore friends are, that are bankers are like, oh, bullshit, doesn't work. Show me. I'm going to come here. Make you taller. Make you lose fat. So I like that challenge. It's like that. Rah. If it's true, it'll show. Even in the first world country, gangster or not, it will show. So, um, yeah. So the bulldog faith is like, you know, it's true. But the way you get there is with intimacy with God. Ask the Holy Spirit. When you read the Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask if for Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1, pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. When you pray for revelation, it's not just memorization. When it's revelation, it becomes real to you. If it's real to you, it will become real through you, even if the person doesn't believe. Um, I was invited. Okay, one last story. I was invited to a, a production event here in Singapore. And uh, some of you guys might know the artists because they're, they're kind of popular in Asia. I don't want to say their name out of respect for them because I know, I know some people in the Philippines listen to their music. Uh, and uh, one of their, oh, 
ah. anyway, I was invited to this production event, not a Christian event, because um, I led my friend's wife to Christ, who's an actress here, and then her husband invited me to this production event. So I met some guys that are Muslim, and then the, but they're in the entertainment industry. The only thing Muslim about them is they don't eat pork. They drink, smoke, do drugs, and everything else. <laughs> the only thing Muslim about them is that they don't eat pork. So I met these guys in this production event. It was like a, like a party. And then they said, hey, we heard uh, you have this gift. And then I said, um, can I, yeah, do you mind if I use this gift on you for free? <laughs> so I just, I just prayed. I, I prayed healing for one of them. Like they had pain in the chest, this rapper guy. And the, and the pain disappeared. And I had a prophetic word over him and he started crying. And then, and then he said, how did you do that? I said, I do it through Isa al Masay. I said it in, in Aramaic. I do it through Jesus, the Messiah. And then after that, his other friend, who's a, who's a, who's a rapper, uh, uh, a Muslim, a Malay rapper came over. He said, I don't need any healing, but, but what you did to him, can you do to me? So this is in the party. I said, I, 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 I can pray for you. I said, I, he was a little drunk and high. So I, I put my hand on him and I just said, like, I just followed the, the TV people. I said, like, Holy Spirit, touch him. That's all I said. Holy Spirit, touch him. And then he started to get woozy in the party, he nearly fell down, I had to hold him up. I'm like, what's going on? They said, well, I just felt this love and joy I never felt before. I said, it's better than E, right? It's better than ecstasy. <laughs> He's like, yeah, what was that? I was like, called the Holy Spirit. Now, we, 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 um, I, I shared with them about my testimony. I didn't lead them to Christ. But two weeks later, I found out a friend of mine who has a Muslim, a secret Muslim Bible study in Singapore for the entertainers, because he's a DJ. He's a, he was a, he's an ex-Muslim. He's a Malay DJ. And then he told me, hey, Mike, there are these two Malay uh, rappers that are famous in Asia. And they came to my Bible study and said someone prayed for them in a party. And now they want to know more about Jesus. <laughs> and then when I went to their Instagram, they started putting Bible verses on their Instagram. <laughs> these Muslim these Muslim rappers. So, you know, even if you may not lead them to Christ right away, give them an encounter with the spirit of God. If you can lead them to Christ, even better. But if you, if you don't right away, let them taste and see that the Lord is good. And he tastes through us. Did I answer your question, Kat? I, I, I don't know if I did. Mark, can you check your uh, message? Can you see your message? Chat is like requesting for prayer. Okay, I'm going to have to move this to the wall so I can see the messages. Um, hold up. How do I do this? Okay. Wow. It's like 99. Oh, hold up. Hold up. Chat. Okay. Uh, okay, let me pray for Cindy. Yeah, Cha, you told me about her. I remember. Okay. Father in heaven, I, I ask that you would give Cha wisdom on how to reach out to Cindy. <laughs> I ask that you give Cha and Ed wisdom on how to reach out to her. Father, I ask that you would visit Cindy in dreams and visions. We bind the spirit of deception attacking Cindy in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and, and we ask, Holy Spirit, that your father, that your glory would invade her place. You know, like Cha, Cindy has a good heart. I don't know her. Cindy really has a genuine heart Mike, to help people. Mike, I think he's, uh, she's here in the chat, in the Zoom. Who? She's here. Uh, Cindy's oh. here in the Zoom. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, are you messaging me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me pray for you, Cindy. I, I don't know you at all, Cindy. I don't even see your picture because I'm, I'm talking on my phone. But I just see that you have a really good heart to help people. And uh, Chaz is obviously a good friend of yours. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I just see, like, the Holy Spirit wants to reveal himself to you uh, even deeper. I, I, I feel like you get dreams. You get even, like, premonitions of things to come. And I think it's something that you were kind of born with, uh, that you are, this is natural to you. You're naturally spiritual. Um, the supernatural has always been something uh, interesting to you and you want to use it in a way to, to help people. And I, and I just, I just speak a blessing over you, Cindy, uh, that you would see, uh, that you would see heaven, that you encounter the goodness of Jesus over your life and his power. And I just see like, even you giving a lot of love to people and, and many times, sometimes the love is not returned to you. You give a lot. You're a very giving person. And, and when you give, you don't tell people, you don't advertise it to the world that you give. But God sees your heart. He sees that your heart is, is one of, of kindness and that uh, you don't need to be recognized for the good things that you do. And, and you, in your heart, uh, you, you're trying to pursue love. What you, the things that you do, you're looking for that 
uh, which is of love, and you're against that which brings fear and guilt and condemnation. Okay, I can't see these messages. So I'm just going as, as I read. Uh, I hope that blesses you, Cindy. <laughs> Mike, can you just go with um, impression of the Holy Spirit who to pray for? Okay. All right, so, um, so what I feel for, for us, the, I had a dream last night. Um, I had a dream of, uh, of people like some, someone getting like, uh, like nightmares and, um, yeah, it's like the things that you watch, like the things it's like, they've traumatized you and it's like recurring nightmares. So I just feel like God wants to, whoever has that nightmare, God, God wants to set you free of, uh, of recurring nightmares. Yeah. It's like, it, it calm, it, it's always there. And like, you're scared to fall asleep. Um, and sometimes your dreams do happen. So God wants to set you free from that, those, the fear of the dark or the fear of certain dreams, because you have a prophetic gift. Uh, also, does anyone have a chest pain? Does anyone like been getting recurring chest pain in the middle of their chest? My husband has a shoulder pain in his shoulders. He's asking for prayers. <laughs> shoulder, no chest pain yet? Any chest pain before I pray for the shoulder? Uh, our group has somebody that has uh, parents have a pain. Brita. In it's Brita. She just chat, typed it in the chat. Okay. All right, Richa. Yes, sorry. Okay. okay. Put your hand on your chest, Rita. All right. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command Rita to be healed. I command the, the pain in her chest to disappear. Now, be healed in Jesus' name. Pain goes. And be made whole. And I command her breathing that when she takes a full uh, breath of air, it will not hurt. Now be healed in Jesus' name. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Matt, you're welcome. Sorry, I can't see the chat. I'm using old tech. And I Mike, think you're just looking at my prayer. Computer. Okay. Who's who's asking? Brenda. Um, I, Brenda. I feel like um, being attacked by witchcraft. Uh, the other night okay. I had a dream. And they attack me in my dreams in the morning okay. or wee hours in the morning. Maybe that my word is for you then, the one I said just now about the, the nightmares. Oh, and yeah, witchcraft. yeah but, it, but it's, I don't watch anything. I, I'm not into Netflix or okay. what, but it's, I feel like it's just witchcraft because okay. I don't watch. Right, yeah. Okay. Well, thank, thank you for Brenda that you and said in your word. word uh, that Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against her shall prosper. So any spirit of witchcraft against against Brenda, I break it now in Jesus' name. Every curse sent against her, we break it and cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. And thank you, Father, that with you, divine orders, you reverse, you reverse the curse into blessings. So all those, all of all those negative words spoken over, all those evil spirits sent against her, we reverse the curse into supernatural divine blessings from heaven now in Jesus' name. And I declare in decree, she would sleep well, sleep sweet with your angels around her, aware of your glory and presence uh, around her, that you would speak to her in her dreams, Father, uh, that she would sleep deep and experience your love. And uh, she would not fear, fear no evil, because you give sleep to your beloved. That she, in, 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 in peace, in restfulness and peace, she will lie down and sleep. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You're welcome. He wants to go next, guys. Mike, ako naman. Me, no. Miles, Miles. No, no, Miles. Miles, yes, thank you. No, no Miles. 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 No, 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 Miles. So Miles, so beacon, actually, beacon people, like, we beacon. are do another Zoom for another time. Let other okay, people okay. go first. Fine, fine, fine. All right. Okay, I do have something for you. I can give it to you next time. <laughs> but I do have something right for now, you. Now, I'm sad. <laughs> okay, Kat, you're the moderator. I'm going to follow you. <laughs> okay, okay. Go for Miles. Then no more. Other people first. Okay. Uh, hey, Miles, I just feel like, uh, I don't know. I just see God using you to... You flowing in a whole nother dimension of preaching and teaching, uh, where it's just you're just growing in it. Uh, where I, I mean, your heart is to empower people. You know, you're you're you have a heart for ministry and to. Uh, I just see like um, I see you traveling in the future as well. 
um, and, and to keep pushing, you know, even for things that you are, you're not, you don't feel you're very good at God using you in <laughs> just to continue to push at those things. Cause you have, you have the right heart. And, um, but, uh, but there's, but God is going to use some of your, uh, what, what is that word? What's that word? Um, What's it called? JC guy with JC. What's that business thing in the Philippines called? JC JCI JIC. Anyway, something junior entrepreneur. I just see something where, where I see God GCI. giving you favor. J what? JCI. Yeah, that one. JCI. I had a picture of you, uh, Miles, sharing in a JCI event, and uh, and uh, oh gosh. Okay. I actually like some of our our friends. Maybe our mutual friends would still like to do cocaine. I see God using you to touch them. <laughs> and then, and uh, yeah, I just see those, God just giving you a divine strategy where, where, where I just, I saw you speaking in JCI and getting such sharp words of knowledge and moving uh, in, in, in well, such, even like, like, the super skeptical ones that make fun of Christianity. Uh, the only church they go to is the palace. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get to know Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Kat. Right. Who next? Yeah. Thank you. Just, just Thank choose you, somebody who's not from Beacon of Light. Because everyone's like getting prophetic. Okay, who else? Who wants, who wants, to, go who wants to go next? Me. Evans team Me. daw. Evans kay hey, Evans. Candice first nag-message sa chat na non-Beacon. Oh. Okay. Candice ke. Okay, Candice ke. Candice ke. Put your name on chat so that we can... Ano, Right, how can virtual I, line. Okay, go, Candice. How can I pray for you? Just pray? Just go? Yes, yeah. However, this Holy Spirit leads. Okay. Okay, so, uh, Candice, the first thing that I see is, um, I just see, uh, first thing I see is worship. I just see you uh, alone worshiping God. And, and just, um, I just see as you worship God, just the voice of God getting more clear to you. And speaking to you through your hobbies, I don't know what, what you do, if, if there's something creative that, that you enjoy doing. Uh, but I just see like, like God speaks to us differently. Like sometimes he'll speak to us through, through the things that we love to do, like through our hobbies. And I see like God speaks to you in a way that fits you. It may not be how he speaks to me, but he speaks to you in a, in a very specific way that fits the way that he has made you. And I see like God has given you uh, a lot of compassion. Like when you, when you really care, you can feel as if you're going through it, like empathy. It's like prophetic where you can kind of sense when someone is hiding their feelings or, or they're not saying. And I just see like, like God giving you, uh, okay, the, the picture I have is you hiding hiding in the background, but then God wanting to put you in the front. And it's like, it's like not wanting to be seen, but then God making you seen for his glory. Because there's things that God is leading you to to do where you where you you may have a desire but you may not feel adequate. I just see you in the front of like like being like a figure head, so to speak. God doing something where you're going to be seen and it's gonna give him glory. And even though you may not feel the confidence, he's gonna put you in a certain position that you don't feel you're qualified for because he wants to uh, show his glory through you and, and he wants to speak to to you things that you don't know naturally, then people will know it is not Candace, but it is God using her, even for people that are not Christian. Uh, yeah, and I just see like things that of um, God bringing joy to people. Like there's some people I feel that around you that are very depressed. If I'm wrong, please let me know. I just see some people that you know that are just going through a lot of dark times that they may not know Jesus, but God giving you the wisdom and the strategy. Uh, I think like, I would say it's like, a, a, I see like a girl, an older lady, uh, giving you the strategy to, to bring Jesus into their life, even though they, they, they kind of reject Jesus. Yeah. That's what I feel for you, Candice. Okay. Okay, next is Warren. Hey. China group. Group from China. Evan. Mike, yeah. next, next is Warren. Mike. Oh, Warren? Okay. Yeah. Okay, where, let me go to Warren. Where are you? I'm here. All right, everyone. Okay. I remember you. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's okay. You and Timothy don't look quite alike. <laughs> All right, so, so I need healing or just, just want me to pray for you? Uh, could you pray for me, please? Okay, just whatever. 
Um, yeah, if, if it's if this if there's anything prophetic, but just prayer. Okay, let's try. Okay, Father, I, I speak a, a blessing over Warren. Uh, so th the picture that I get for you right now is um, I just see like God taking you to a new level of um, of growth in terms of of Him using you, and also in terms of um, of work. And I see that some things are unclear because when I'm trying to see like what's the thing for you next. It's like blurry, <laughs> you know, and I just see like, when you don't know what to do, do the last thing that God has told you. Cause I feel like there's some uncertainty of, of like what the next step is. Like you have options, like what do I do, God? Do I do this? Do I do that? Uh, am I hearing God or am I making it up in my head? <laughs> am I supposed to do this, this work? I just see like you having options. And, and I also see, but, but in the midst of this, God not showing me, he'll lead you. Remember the last thing he told you and he'll lead you step by step. And many times when you don't know what to do, follow your passion and the compassion in your heart. Things that you have a passion for and a compassion for. It's both passion and compassion is how God leads. But sometimes he will not be obvious. Sometimes he will give you a dream. But sometimes you'll ask for a dream and you'll get nothing. <laughs> you're like, ah, I'm getting nothing. I get no picture. What do I do? But when, you, when you're in that place, go by your compassion and your passion. And when you don't know what your passion is or if your passion is correct, go by Psalms 37, verse 4. Psalm 37, verse 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. As you delight and worship God, ask uh, delight and worship in him with your desires surrendered to him. And as you surrender your desires to him, he will lead your desires according to, uh, to his will. It's like when we surrender our desires and as we delight in him, he will direct our desires according to his plan. So that's just uh, what I feel for you now. But I feel that God is growing you and stretching you uh, as a leader, as a leader uh, um, in the marketplace and also as a Christian. And it's not comfortable. Yeah. It's not it's going not. to be comfortable. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next. Okay. I'm lost. Who's next? <laughs> Wait. What about Linda. people from China? Yeah, yeah. People from China, I think. Sorry, guys, I only have like 10 minutes left to have a call with Russia for work. Uh, I think people from China need healing. Some of them have cancer. Okay. Evan, so we will pray healing for your people in China. Yeah, I have a few healing requests. Hello, Coco. Yeah, I have a few healing requests here. Uh, uh, okay, the, the baby, I think it's a baby yeah. that uh, uh, 10 to 12 months old, her skin is like the um, eczema. Um, People, yeah, 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 something like that. She's been drinking. Okay. Um, she, she, we she have a put, your hand, put your hand on the baby's head and I'll pray for the baby now. Okay. Hands there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. In the name of Jesus. I speak healing to the baby. I command every spirit of infirmity to leave the baby now in Jesus' name. I speak to the baby's skin to be healed. I command the baby's skin to be made new. Now from head to toe, healing power flow over the baby and skin be made new now in Jesus' name over this baby in China. Amen. Amen. You said there's a few people with cancer. Uh, no. Is the one with cancer there? The one we paid for before? Uh, uh, I think some kidney trans transplantation and then the, the, the kidney doesn't work like properly. Some... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, put her, put her hand on her kidney or his uh, kidney. 
那个星星把你的手、okay. 呃叫或者叫你妈妈把那个放在你妈妈怎么在你旁边呢？放在你妈妈身上。Okay, right okay. now in Jesus' name, I command the kidney to be healed and to function properly now. 所有的你的肾马上奉耶稣圣名完全的得医治。All discomfort leave her body and kidney be made new now in Jesus' name. 奉耶稣圣名。呃，肥翁妈妈的晕眩症，头晕。啊 ，OK， somebody has like a dizziness， always has dizziness。Somebody's mom. Okay, okay. The same person have ringing of the ear. Can you ask? 耳朵有没有 ？Do they think have ringing of the ear too? 不知道啊，这是能打的，自己不知晕眩。She she write a message so we can't ask. Yeah. Okay, okay. Constant dizziness. Okay. okay, is she there? She's listening, right? But somebody's mom. Yeah. It's her or her mom who have dizziness. Her mom, her mom, Beyond's mother. Okay. Yeah. If the mother's with her, tell her to lay hands on her mother's head. Uh, I think they're in separate, separate places. I see. Okay. Okay. Well, well, Father, we lift up this lady's mother to you. Thank you that you know who she is. We ask Father that she would encounter you right now, and that your healing power would flow over her mother. Now in Jesus' name, that her mother would know that Jesus is touching her. So we command the vertigo, the dizziness, to leave the mom now. In the name of Jesus and the glory of God to be manifested upon the mother, wherever she is, glory of God be manifested upon the mother now, and be healed, Mama, be healed wherever China you are, be healed now. Okay. Okay. One more. Lu Wanping, Yao Tong, Xin Zhang, Fu Ke Wen Di. Uh, somebody has a back pain and a heart problem. Okay. So does the heart problem have the chest pain too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that's the one I was thinking. Okay, all right. I speak healing. Tell, put the hand on the heart. Okay. 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 Now, don't move into the other part of the body. I feel the back pain move sometimes, but I command that spirit of infirmity to leave that person's body now in Jesus' name. Back be healed now, free of pain, all discomfort go, and heart be made new and be strong, be strong and new now in Jesus' name. Beat with resurrection power. Later, you can ask him to check and let me know. You don't have to check Evan, now. Yeah. Evan, 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 Evan. Yeah. You have a person with cancer, right? Maybe you should ask Mike to pay for her. Uh, here, there is a family with cancer. Yes, sir. Is there someone with cancer? Yeah, last time we prayed for her. And then there's somebody like two, um, the brother, the husband is sick and then the sister is in the hospital. I remembered that last week. Okay, okay. Uh, like, Evan, last week, there's somebody who has cancer, right? The one we prayed for. I'm trying to remember who it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I, if you're done, we'll go back to the yeah, line. Somebody here with a uh, bone, bone cancer? Yeah, oh, I. Somebody with a... Uh, Bone, bone cancer. Her name is Sing Sing. Okay. Sing Sing. Okay. Yeah. Just maybe. Okay. She has yeah. bone cancer. Is she there? Yeah, she's here. Okay, Sing Sing. I'm gonna pray for you now. Ah, Sing Sing, I'm going to pray. Okay. In Jesus' name, I command the spirit of infirmity to leave Sing Sing now. In Jesus' name, I curse the cancer in her bones. I command the root of the cancer to die and disappear. In the name of Jesus, I command her bone marrow to be healed and to produce copper, red, and white blood cells. Be free of cancer from head to toe. Healing power flow to Sing Sing now. In the name of Jesus, all cancer cells die. Good cells multiply over Sing Sing's body. Now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, there's somebody with a uh, brain cancer. Okay. 
You put your hand on your head. We pray for you. Uh, the issue with him? Okay, okay, put the hand on the head. I command the brain cancer to die in the name of Jesus. All the cancer to disappear. And I command the brain to be healed, to be made whole. Now, be cancer-free and brain be restored to normal in the name of Jesus now. Okay, guys. Uh, Hi, how many how many people can you still pray for? I have to go. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Anyone need healing though? Before I go, I'll do one last prayer for. Oh, this one be testing cancer or not, right? Testing cancer. Intestinal cancer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, have her or him put the hand on the stomach. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, in Jesus' name. Uh, we command the intestines to be cancer free. In the name of Jesus, we command every cancer cell in the body to die. We command the intestines to be made whole and function properly now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Sorry, guys. We've got to go. Bye, Mike. Thank you Thanks for doing bye, this. Bye, Mike. Bye, Mike. Bye, Mike. Bye, Mike. Mike. Bye, Mike. Bye, Mike. Bye, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Hot pot soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Be going soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Evan will pray. Evan, pray prophetic for people. Come on, practice. Evan, you can do it. No, no, I need to handle the group because it's uh they are still there. Eh, Coco can do it. <laughs> Joke. You have to go? Yeah, yeah, I have to go. I have to go. Okay, bye. Okay, maybe, guys, thank you for joining. I hope you were blessed. And thank I think you. maybe um, just do another Zoom where Mike will pay for people na lang. No preaching. Bye, Ka. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. PM Bye. na lang ako if you like prayers. Bye. I'll send bye, bye, guys. bye guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.